Okay, raise of hands. Who here wants to be a prophet online? Did you raise your hand? No? Bullshit. Pretty much everybody wants people to listen to them. On the Stoneworks Minecraft server, easily one of the most fun and rewarding ways to play this game is by creating lore, mythology, churches, and rituals centered around your very own roleplay religion. This is what makes Stoneworks Minecraft so unique, as the worlds of Rathnir and Eldom are abound with magical artifacts, holy books, shrines, and true stories of heroic priests and prophets. If you want to learn more, watch this video that I worked really hard on for some awesome examples. This video is a companion to that one. So here, today I want to go over what religions on Minecraft actually are, the rules and regulations, as well as how we actually make roleplay religions into a real part of the gameplay that drives server history. I hope y'all like and subscribe for this because I'm basically giving away the secrets of my server's business model. This is Stoneworks World Building and we're about to sit back, chill out, and learn how to start a Minecraft religion. Just me, you, and Joe Rogan. You'll be sticking around. You can join the server today. Just put this IP into Minecraft Java Edition 1.16.5 right now. We invite all creative, wholesome, and history-driven people to come on. Everyone who stays on the server or doesn't get banned tells me it's a completely unique experience with a great community, so why not join now? These religions on the Stoneworks server are not fake. They are real explorations of people's values, wants, and agency, but they're placed in the context of Minecraft block game. So inside this game that has hundreds of items and a giant sandbox world for you to play around in, players have the freedom to turn their religious world building into a real physical entity that shapes the world around them and the lives of players. So here's our agenda in this video. First, how do people actually come up with their religions? Like, how does it physically work? Second, the server rules of religion. Third, how to do sacrifices and contact your gods. And fourth, how to organize a religion and convert people. If you want to skip around, I made little chapters on this video's progress bar. So the way religion in Minecraft works is like this. A group of friends joins the Stoneworks Minecraft server, however they find out about the server, they'll quickly notice that players have religions, temples, holy books, etc, and they might want a piece of that action. Either the group collectively forms some ideas for their religion, or one player takes the lead in writing the lore and coming up with the ideas. Either way, they start developing their pantheon of gods, their creation story, important symbols, influences from real-life culture, cultures, etc. This part is tons and tons of creative, imaginative fun. Now, player-built religions are often best represented in a wiki page on the Stoneworks MC wiki. Since it's a public forum and a single page can host a lot of creative writing for lore, as well as descriptions of the in-game play that the religion creates. This is to say players also manifest the religion in-game. They'll build churches, shrines, statues, they'll write holy books, they might come up with some rules, like for example, don't kill dogs, and they might perform rituals and sacrifices as group events. Most of the time this happens in the context of a small group of players or a town. So the church becomes one of the important big builds, a centerpiece of the town, and the religion and religious symbolism becomes a marker for the group's identity. This is different when the religion arises in more diverse urban environments, but I think that happens less often. It's more often the small groups of players, all centered around a town, they do their own thing, you know what I mean. Now secondly, seriously, you need to know these rules. One, no real-world religions. You can emulate and take inspiration from things like Islam, the Buddha, the Orishas, whatever. But do not literally import them into Minecraft. It's bad enough that I publicly compared Gonf to Jesus and Garfield to Allah, but literally remaking religions in-game is uncreative and kind of demeaning. Two, meme religions are iffy. 
In the admin chats, I'm always defending them personally because I think they're important for keeping us grounded, that this is just Minecraft and the tone doesn't have to be serious. However, the religions of Big Chungus, Thick Thighs, Femboy, Amogus have all been played out a million times, and at this point, they're just dumb and annoying. We admins reserve the right to shut them down and blow up your shrines to Shrek's dong, especially if you don't develop a proper lore for it. That does not mean if you create a 40,000 year long backstory to Shrek's dong, that will leave your religion alone. 3. Do not worship the admins, and don't straight up ask the admins for magical artifacts. That's really bad for the role playing on this server, and I already have a massive ego so I don't need any more excuses for that. The admins on this server are actually a part of the communication between the gods and players. So like, you say prayers to your gods, you want to give them sacrifices, we bring those to them. So at best we're like Hermes, at worst we're those little demon minions that Hades always has around in Hercules. Realistically, we're a bunch of computer geeks running a Minecraft server. 4. Obviously. Nothing offensive. And don't worship any real life person, especially if they're really bad and they killed a bunch of people. Early in Rathnir's history, I had to talk a guy into dismantling his holy church to Grimace and Mao Zedong. Why? I, I don't fucking know, man. 5. You are allowed to persecute other in-game religions, call crusades, genocide them, whatever. But heed my words, we have strict rules against toxicity, maybe too strict. So if you're repeatedly attacking people, harassing them, insulting them out of character, or just being nasty, we will punish you for it. Stick to in-game persecution that's grounded in our roleplay language. For example, there was a goddess that traumatized and almost laid waste to the entire server last March, named Entropy. Redfire Rex has a dope video on her, check it out. There are still cults that worship her, but it's pretty taboo to the players that were around then because she caused a lot of really bad shit to happen. Since then, players have called each other entropy worshippers, even when they're not. Like, that's a good example in our roleplay language. It has history and weight to it, and you can even make up slurs for the people that you don't like, like the Yimu Outall Empire people are called Yimmies, or the Bardonians have been called Dandies. I'm sure there's others, but I'm kind of out of the loop. Okay. Do you know these rules? Do you have them drilled deep into your subconscious like the time the neighbor kid came over and put his nuts in the ice cream? Good. Holy shit, Jamie, pull that video up. Now, let's talk communicating with the greater beings. Gods, spirits, aliens, whatever you worship. And if you're watching this section, I'm gonna ask you please watch it all the way through because there's stuff at the end that, so long as everybody knows it, it makes my staff team's lives much easier. Okay. You can communicate to the gods through sacrifices and rituals. Sacrificing is giving items up in reverence to your gods. Sometimes your gods will give you things in return, enchanted artifacts, things like Excalibur, the holy Arbuckle lasagna, or even just a cooked chicken with fire aspect on it. These kinds of things are commonly awarded during server events, but are still infrequently given during everyday worship and sacrifices. When you sacrifice, you need to call out in the global chat so the gods or the admins notice you're doing a sacrifice. Do a prayer or an opening story of some kind, calling the spirits and gods to come be with you. Oftentimes the gods will make their presence known, oftentimes they won't. When you do a sacrifice, the gods generally like it when you give up valuable items in lavish ways. Big temples, lots of people there, big rituals, lots of culture and thematic symbolism behind how you're doing it. That's all good, it appeases them. You can either leave your valuable items to sacrifice in a chest or a barrel on the altar, or you can destroy them in front of the gods, toss them into fire, the void, whatever suits you. If you leave them in a chest and they stay there for a while, admins can come and pick up the sacrifice to bring to the gods. Although if somebody steals it first, we're not reimbursing you for that, you'll just have to go kill them and maybe put it back in the chest. Now if you're destroying your items, I recommend you record a video where you show the items and their destruction. That way us admins can take that to the gods and show proof of what you gave in your devotion to them. Now there's four, count them, four things I need to stress. 1. 
Human sacrifice doesn't count for much. Players respawn. It's not really a big deal. Unless your character is dying a cannon death and you alter your entire playstyle, mayhaps. But that's not going to happen on a normal sacrifice, so human sacrifice is kind of lame to the gods. 2. Sacrifices don't always yield returns. It's pretty often that players give up expensive netherite, then we take it to the gods and it's like, yup, okay, thank you, and that's it. Then the players get mad at us. So don't do this just because you think you'll get more stuff out of it. 3. Sacrifices are not a means to free stuff. If you treat it this way, the gods are going to be kinda angry at you, and they feel justified in f***ing with you. I've seen players have something to sacrifice, and they leave it out on a chest at the side of the road labeled For Stony. I take it and I throw it away, because sacrifices are not a roadside event, it's not a mailbox you put stuff in and you get free stuff out of. When I came back to that particular guy's town, that patch of road was blown up and there was lava falling all over it. If you reach out to the gods and they're not appeased, they feel justified in punishing you for it. 4. Now, I am telling you systematically how we deal with sacrifices, and now that that is the case, EVERYBODY IS GOING TO BE DOING THEM! Unless it's a server event, the more people who bombard global chat with sacrifice requests, the fewer we'll actually get to and the fewer will be rewarded by the gods. Have you heard of the tragedy of the commons? Maybe the prisoner's dilemma? Both of those are kind of applicable here. So yeah, please keep your sacrifices in which you want to ensure admin intervention infrequent for special occasions, because I have a feeling I'm opening a floodgate of players who want to talk to their gods. And like with good reason, everybody wants to do that, but when everybody gets to talk to the gods, it's not, it's not really as special, is it? That being said, please, please do not open tickets for sacrifices or DM the staff trying to get them online so that they'll watch over your sacrifices. That's not what these things are here for. Thank you. That's how you sacrifice to the gods in Minecraft. Obviously, I'm pretty f***ing turned about this because I feel I've had to deal with a lot of weird shit. Now, if you do it ritualistically as a performance, that's much, much cooler, honestly, and the admins and the gods, we love to see that shit. On my Patreon, I have a little lecture that explains how rituals work in real life, hint, hint, nudge. So if you want to get into that and make the best rituals on the server, go for it. The largest sacrifice that was ever given to the gods was the entire capital city of the Asharian Empire. If you watched my video on the Minecraft religions, you'll already know well about what I'm talking about, so good luck beating that. So now let's assume you have the basics of your religion, it's thematic logic, wiki page, temple, the holy book, they're all mostly done. At this stage, players often slow down on purposefully adding new things to the religion. Sometimes memes and other aspects of the group's culture can merge into the religion, but that's pretty small scale. Like I said earlier though, the religion is an identifying factor of the group, so it remains relevant in any struggles that the town undergoes. If they get into a war, they try to declare independence, they have a falling out or they settle new colonies, they may call on their gods and see their religion as a distinguishing factor of their group's identity. After a long time of dealing with the ups and downs of geopole and roleplay that this server features, some of these histories are often recontextualized religiously, and I think that's awesome. A battle that's won may be attributed to their favorite god, some server event may have been fixed by them sacrificing, that kind of stuff, see what I mean? I think this effectively entrenches the religion deeper as a real thing in the group, but it also gives it a reputation among the other players as your group publicly deals with the outside world in a myriad of ways. Now with that kind of development comes the tricky part, growing your religion. You have it set up, and you have a history. Since your group has survived the whole way through a bunch of stuff, I imagine you've lost some people but gained some people in your town, and they're most likely converts or at least agreeable to your religion, especially if they're newbies. But how do you grow your religion outside your own borders to make a cultural influence that isn't based on the people that you control? The way I see it, there's five interconnecting parts to this. 1. Create lore that is cool, fun, or interesting. 
Many players worship the mystical aspects in Minecraft, the sun and the moon, the void, space, imaginative dimensions, etc. Others worship more fun, meme things, like the idea of Garfield being a god, or the boisterous immortal Rat King being a disruptive influence on Eldham. Those are fun to be a part of. Others worship important parts of gameplay, kind of like how real religions worship important influential aspects of life. In Minecraft, that would be crops, animals, interesting mobs, gemstones, etc. There's a religion in Rathmere called Snoutiality that has pigs as its focal point. The three main gods are pig gods, so obviously pigs are venerated and you're not supposed to kill them. So long as your pantheon, lore, mythology, and symbols appeal to these kinds of things and you make it obvious in your presentation of them, people won't be disinterested by your religion. 2. Create lore and theology that is easy to understand. This is the argument of appealing to a wide base of players and understanding that a lot a lot of people are casual observers of the religions on here. Some religions thrive more off of small exclusive groups that take more effort to be a part of, but for example, if you look around the server, you can see a lot of people worshipping the sun. It's pretty easy to understand, the sun is right there, at night monsters come out, people are familiar with sun worship and metaphors about light and darkness from real life, boom. Sun God religion spreads because it's not that hard to explain. 3. Grow your political power. Since religion is a marker of group identity, if others want to associate with your group's identity and get closer to you, often that happens by them adopting your religion. Easily the best example of this is Soleanin, which held a lot of political power and was at the center of a massive web of alliances. If you are a very powerful king and people know that they can get closer to you and assure your support for them by converting to your religion, then political power is an extremely potent force for people to want to convert to your religion. Four, contact other people and make your religion's presence felt. This one's pretty hard to do right, honestly. In order to get people to fully convert to your religion, you need to confront them with the religion in a way that they have a positive view of it. This could be like having a temple in a populous city, sending missionaries out, hosting festival parties for everybody to attend, or sending prayers in the global chat. The biggest problem with this is that often when people try, it's really annoying. I've watched countless players walk up to other and be like, wanna read my religion's holy book? And they agree to it, and they see that it's a hundred pages long, and they're like, nah, go away, please. Hosting festivals is probably one of the best options here. If you can bring in a bunch of people together and organize a bunch of in-game activities for them like archery, horse racing, casino games, drinking, PvP tournaments, obstacle courses, then you're good. They'll have fun here, and that sticks with them and gives you a good reputation so long as it doesn't fall flat on its face. Just make sure to tie your religion into it, maybe do a big communal sacrifice, and the more that the outside players are involved, the more receptive they might be to the religion. Literally, if you're lighting a cow on fire to sacrifice, let's say, have everybody at the party just run in circles around the fire. It'll seem like they're a part of it, simple, but kinda stupid. And finally, if you're praying and, what's the word, evangelizing in chat so people will notice your religion, it'll often be really irritating. If you're spamming, being like a radical zealot, or not responding well to people criticizing and memeing on you, it looks bad on you. It takes charisma to evoke a good reaction, something that Gomp and the Immortal Rat King seem to have had in their chat experiences. 5. Appeal to other players' wants How are you going to entice players to join your religious group over someone else's? How are you going to incentivize them to build your temples and make art for your gods over their own religion that they could start? I took a poll of my YouTube followers, subscribe if you want to be part of that sort of thing by the way, and here's what I can generally say that players want. Oh boy, a list inside of a list. They want to have basic security, to be creative and develop something, to gain prestige and glory, to be valued in a good community, to have fun, especially in roleplay escapism, and to exert control over others. Players who want some basic security are more likely than not newbies or exiles. Giving them food, a place to store their stuff, and tools is going to be helpful for them. As well as any advice and protection, this gives you a good name to them. 
However, this can and usually is a stepping stone for them to leave and then go do their own thing, so you have to entice them in some other way too. Players who want to be creative and develop something can have a hard time as low-level practitioners of a religion since they want to be part of the creative process. When was the last time you heard of some bum f Joe Schmo deciding Catholic doctrine just because he went to church on Sunday? Here in this religion, I recommend giving these players some power to do this, but obviously not enough that they change the religion's overarching themes, the important gods and values. If you did that, that would chip away at the unity of the religion. Perhaps you could set up a system of saints so that they can come up with their own heroes and divine stories that can be adopted into the religion, but are only relevant at a local level. Maybe you can make your pantheon kind of fluid, maybe some gods have avatars and aspects of other gods that are lower level than them, or that they could have minor gods beneath them that the other players can make up. Maybe you can give them some kind of task to build a temple in their town, make some art, or do whatever they're good at to further the religion in a creative way. I've seen all of these happen, and it usually doesn't blow up in people's face. Maybe once or twice it has. It's definitely not as common though. Now, players who want prestige and glory can also suffer as lowly practitioners. If your religion is the hot new thing, then being a part of it will grant some status, of course. If it isn't, like most religions, then investing a lot of time and resources into your religion can help. Lavish temples, rich sacrifices, accumulating artifacts, as well as having political backing from powerful states can all give your religion an aura of status. Now this next part for the prestige and glory players also applies to players who want control. If your religion is pretty centralized, you have a player or a small group of players who run it and they can canonize and make certain doctrines official, you could set up a hierarchy of priests, bishops, and cardinals. This appeals to players' wants for status and control, but it also folds them into the structure of your religion so that it benefits them. If you do this, definitely reward players for their loyalty, their devotion, and their resources that they give into the religion, because that'll help incentivize other players to do the same, or for them to keep doing it. God, I sound like I'm running a fucking pyramid scheme. Or like, a cult. Am I running a cult? Shit. <laughs> for players who want to be valued in a good community, First, you need to have a good community, so fun, chill, wholesome, creative people, or brutally warlike people. I don't know what this particular player is into. <laughs> Second, it's a good idea to have some indication of an in-group and an out-group. Say there's a town of pumpkin worshippers, and they have this social value that if anybody stands on or breaks the pumpkins that are in the town square, they will attack that person. New players to the town will probably make this mistake at one point and be attacked, but in doing so, they learn the group's customs and they can turn around and start attacking those who do not know and keep standing on the fucking pumpkins. Having practices like this that take some learning but ingrain them into the community's culture allows people to feel like they're on the inside with this group of people, which is a nice feeling. Also, doing rituals where only practitioners of the religion are invited also reinforces this. My advice regarding those creative and development-oriented players also applies here if they want to be valued in the community. If someone wants to contribute to the religion, try to make them feel validated, let them to a certain extent. Make players feel good about being with you, and make it feel like they're actually invested in your religion with creative time and resource energy. See what I mean? Now, pretty much every player on here wants to have fun. We are playing Minecraft after all. And this is pretty easy to explore, but it depends on the player that you're appealing to. You can do character-driven roleplay, you can go out crusading, you can host festivals with all those activities that I mentioned earlier. Basically, tie your religion in with these fun activities that players do anyways, and it'll plant a seed in the other players' heads that like, oh, 
this religion's a good time because I won the archery contest here. Oh, this religion's dope as hell because it allowed me to go to war with these noobs and take all their stuff. If they have such a good time, they may want to emulate these activities with others in the same fashion. Don't go declaring war on all the noobs though, unless you have political reasons or you've registered for the bandit tag. I find that the religiously driven players are usually pretty big into roleplay. Like, that makes sense. So creating a cool character for yourself with some cool backstory or some personality traits may be worth it in terms of expanding your religion. And regarding the players who want control, I already gave you my only advice there. Hierarchies, make promises of promoting them, maybe give them titles if there are special weapons or like a shield or something that you can give them to show they're a part of the religion. That would probably work too. I think you can see the pattern here. Set up your religion so that people feel good about being a part of it, where you reward their efforts in expanding it and are primarily there to show people a good and rewarding time. But also, make sure you keep a single, unifying group identity intact. Some people deal with this by stomping out other religions in their territory, some integrate them, some have a pope or like a group of cardinals that can reject certain doctrines and make others official, and ignore all the ones that kind of need to be in a gray area so that everybody's happy. It's up to you and how creative your lore gymnastics can be. If all goes well, outsiders should look on with jealousy at how much fun it is, how cool it is to be part of this group, the rituals you're doing together, the titles and the resources that practitioners have. Make it a good time. A new player who isn't being tied down by founding a town and making their own religion is going to be wondering if your religion is right for them based on what it seems like it can do for them, how much they enjoy interacting with it and the people involved, and its reputation around the server. Now to finish off this section for you good boys and girls who finished my videos, here comes the wild card that is incredibly impactful in my experience. On the server, there are seemingly random and supernatural events where players are chosen and they undergo revelations from the gods, where they witness something super strange, some big transformation around them. This can take a lot of forms. Sometimes players don't notice them. Sometimes players think that they can make a lot of money off of it. It's really funny. I call it making a profit. Okay, I'll see my way out. Anyone who witnesses these revelations or events will hopefully be more drawn to the religion. They're not supposed to supplant a religion's doctrine, but add on to it. It should legitimize the religion's gods and its tradition if it goes well, or it could just be pretty random and people can adopt it if they want to. So please, do not hesitate to co-opt the supernatural events or oddities that go on around Rathnir and Eldom as part of your religion. It's totally up to you. But, in my opinion, as long as people can see, oh, that's weird, in Minecraft, fire isn't supposed to be literally right on top of water, then it helps them to think that there are actually gods on your side. Because there are. There is no Minecraft server that has such a rich, deep well of lore, culture, and world building. And it is because of the players who take initiative and find strategic ways to lead and convince others to join them. Reach out to new people, get out of your comfort zone, go travel as an ecstatic monk in the midst of a trance, speaking in tongues. Seriously, this Minecraft world is a chance for you to explore the beliefs that you find interesting, and there are no consequences for failure. Except maybe, maybe you'll get a clown emoji here or there. So that is that. I hope you learned about how to make a religion in Minecraft. Don't worship the admins, and uh, thank you for watching. Wow, look at all these dope as hell Patreon supporters! Rift Ranger, XIV, Alex Mitchell, Tyler Hart Lee, Chance Morrison, Kenny Vetter, Sam Welch, Tyler Simpson, Bago Fettuccine, Ben McFarlane, Ben Snow, Joseph Varon, Rowan DeWitt, Travis, William Price, Ian Openshaw, RC Ace, Reaper's Mercy, 